Hi students, hope everyone is fine and safe. It gives me immense pleasure to welcome you all to my new video. And today's video is about another interesting topic in unit 4. We're going to see multiple bus organization. Right? And this is very easiest question in this unit and very important question as well. Right? So in this unit, we have already seen single bus organization. Right? And today we're going to see multiple bus organization. Right? So, before starting this multiple bus organization, we will see what is the basic difference between single bus structure and multi bus structure, right? From the name itself, we can understand, right? From single bus structure, it will have only one common bus. We have already seen that, right? Right, only one common bus, right? It will have all the registers connected, ALU connected, multiplexer connected, everything will be connected here, right? And it can able to transfer only one data for a clock cycle, right? That is at, at a time it can able to execute only one particular data, right? And it has connected with different devices, that is I.O. devices or any circuit devices of varying speed, right? That is what single bus structure. And multi bus structure, right? In processor, it will have multiple bus. Your multiple bus processor, right, will have different buses, okay? That is to speed up the operation, right? To speed up the operation, right? So that multiple data transfer can be done. In single bus, only one data bus, only one data can be transmitted. But in multiple bus, right? You can able to transfer multiple data. Correct? Right. Another very important thing you have to know about processor, right? In modern processor right now, right? In every computer right now, you, you see that the generation of the processor, right? From i5, i7, i10, right? So, for every generation of the processor, the speed of the processor will be increasing. We have already seen what are the techniques to improve the speed of the processor, right? How the speed of the processor is increased, right? It will be by, broadly, it can be of two types. One is pipelining operation, pipelining operation. And another one is superscalar operation, superscalar operation, right? Generally, how will you increase the speed if you parallelly do the operation, right? Instead of doing one by one, if you parallelly do the operation, it will be executed fast, correct? That is the concept, right? In that, you have something called pipelining. What is pipelining? Pipelining is you have two instructions. For example, move R1, R2, add R1, R2, right? So, this particular instruction will be fetched and then it will be executed, correct? Before the execution complete fully, it will start executing this particular instruction. That is called as pipelining concept, right? Executing continuously. Before the instruction, the instruction is completed, the next instruction will start executing, right? That is called as pipelining operation. And what is superscalar? Superscalar is nothing but, right? That is instead of fetching one by one, the processor it will fetch more instruction, more than five, ten instructions at the same time, right? For example, in, in previous videos, we have seen how one particular instruction is fetched and how it is executed, right? Instead of one particular instruction, lot of instruction, move R1, R2, add R1, R2, right? Load R1, R2, like this, if lot of instructions, right? Fetching lot of instruction and executing parallelly. That is called a superscalar operation, right? Now, we'll see multi-bus organization. You know, this is complete theoretical question. All you're going to do is, you're going to explain this particular diagram, right? You're going to compare single bus architecture and multi bus architecture and explain, that's all, okay? So you can see here from the name itself, it is called multi bus organization. So it has three buses, bus A, bus B, bus C. It can be called as three bus organization, right? And as usual, you'll have program counter, registers, instruction register, instruction decoder, IR, MDR, MAR, all those things will be there. Correct? Right. But there will be difference here. Right. Right. For example, right, you can see here, this is single bus organization. See, just, 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 just for the explanation, I am adding this particular diagram. While writing this particular question, you don't want to write, draw this particular diagram. Okay. This is single bus organization. You can see all the registers, right, and ALU, multiplexer, Instruction recorder, everything will be connected to this internal bus. Only one bus that is connected to all the registers. Correct? And you can see you have a lot of registers. Y, Z, Temp, 
general purpose registers R1, R2, R3, all those things. Okay. But in single in multibus, you will not have all those temporary registers. Okay. Instead of lot of R1, R2, R3, temp, X, Y, Z, all those registers, you have something called register file. Right. What is a register file? Registers will be in the array location. Right. It will have a lot of registers here. It will be in an array. Right. And you can see it has three ports. Right. That is one port is connected to bus A. And one port is connected here, bus B. And one port is connected to bus C. Which means, right, one register is sending the data to bus A. One register is sending the data to bus B. One particular register is receiving the data from bus C. Clear? In the same step, within a one clock cycle, right, within one particular instruction, at that time, three register can be executed here, right, which is not be possible in, in single bus organization. Similarly, there is no need for all those registers separately, R1, R2, R3, there is no need for temp registers as well. Clear? Right. And then very importantly, you ought to understand ALU, right? If you see the internal bus ALU, you know that internal bus ALU, right, that a single bus organization, what happens? You have A and B, right, and for this B is directly connected to this internal bus, and for this A input, you have multiplexer, multiplexer will select either constant A or Y, so the, the content which is coming from Y, it will reach the A, and then the ALU will use this any operation add, sub, it will perform that operation, and will send the content to Z and then it will send the content to internal bus and from the internal bus it will send to any particular register. So much of steps involved here, right? But if you look at multibus organization, you can see the ALU is very simple here. Even here you have constant 4, but that is not for incrementing the PC, okay? That is different. In, in, in uh, single bus organization, what you will do? You will do for incrementing the PC, Okay, but you can see here, the bus is directly connected to A. You can see here, even here it is multiplexer, right? It, it, you can see this is one particular input. The bus is directly connected here, right? Through this multiplexer, it reaches A. And, and another data, it will reaches B, right? And output of the ALU can be directly connected to the bus C. There is no need for Z register. You can see there is no need for Z register. There is no need for Y register, all those things here. Okay, right. And very importantly, you can see here the content A, right. That is from this particular bus, this particular bus and it will enable add. So what it will do, it will add A plus B and the result will be sent to this particular R, this particular internal bus, this particular bus. Right, right. And another thing is also possible. What is that? Right, the ALU without performing any particular instruction, it can also use to transfer the information. For example, right, if one particular information is sent to A and if it is sent to this particular bus, if it needs to send to this particular bus, that is possible. Without doing any particular arithmetic and logical operation, we can send the content of A to this particular bus. We can send the content of B to this particular bus. How it is possible? We have to enable R is equal to A. And we got to enable R is equal to B. If R is equal to A, the content of A will reach this particular bus. And if the content of R is equal to B, the content of B will reach this particular bus. So simple. Okay. Right. Constant 4 is not used here. It will be used. It is not used for normal operation. It is used for, right. What it will use? To, it is used for some, some other operations. I'll tell you that. Right. Some other load and store operation, you can use this. Okay. Clear. Another step is program counter. You know, in, 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 in internal bus organization, single bus organization, the PC, it has to perform all the operation, right? PC select 4 and PC 4, only then the content will be incremented. But here you have something called incrementer, it will automatically increment the PC directly. One instruction is completed, then it will go to PC plus 4. And then it will go to PC plus 8, like that it moves on. That is the value of incrementer. Right? And you can see the MAR, MDR, as I said, MAR will have one input, one output, and MDR will have two input, two output. You can see here MDR connected to all the buses here. Correct? Right? And you know what is instruction register and instruction decoder is same like in the internal bus organization. Whatever instruction which is present in internal IR, it will be decoded here and it will be executed. 
Okay. So, whatever information I have explained here, that is given as points here. Okay. So, you can see that is the points I have explained. Okay. So, that is about multibus organization. The select for is used to store multi-load, multi-store instruction. Clear? Right. Now, I will give one particular example. Right. One particular example for multibus organization. So, here you can see here, what do you have to do? Right. R4, R5, R6. Right. So, if it is internal bus, inside a single bus, it will take more number of steps. Number of steps will be more. It will take more time. One by one, it has to execute. But here, we can do it parallelly. Right. How it will, it will done parallelly? Right. What I said, the first three phases is common. Right. This is the instruction. This instruction must be moved to IR. Correct. It has to be moved to IR. Correct. Right. So, that is called fetch phase. That is called as fetch phase. I am explaining the same thing. Okay. That is from PC. It has to go to IR. And then PC has to be incremented. Correct. That is the fetch phase. And this three is three steps is common for all the instruction. But a little different here because it is a three bus organization. You can see here PC out. Right. From PC out, it is sent to MAR in. How it is sent to MAR in, you can see here, how it is sent to MAR in, right? From PC, right? From PC, it is sent to this, any particular bus, right? And this, from this bus, it is sent to this particular B, right? And if it is B, if R is equal to B, R is equal to B, what will happen? It will move to this particular, this particular bus, and this from this particular bus, it will reach this MAR. Correct? Right? That is what is mentioned here. From PC, R is equal to B and then MAR in and it will initiate the read cycle. Correct? And it will initiate the read cycle. It will wait till the read cycle completed. Once the read cycle is completed, what will happen? It will send to the MDR. Right? And once it reaches the MDR, what it have to do? It has to go to the IR. Correct? It has to go to the IR. So, it can be done in the same way. R is equal to B and then from internal bus it reaches the IR. Correct? Right. And similarly, little different here. Right. The previous instruction, we have lot of steps to increment the PC. Right. But here we have incremental. Correct. So, what we can do? We can directly write increment PC which will just increment the PC to the next value. So, this is the fetch phase. So, at the end of the fetch phase, what will happen? The IR will get this particular instruction at R4, R5 and R6. Correct? Right. This will reach the IR. Now what will happen? This particular instruction has to be decoded. Correct? Right. It has to go to the execution phase. How to execute now? Listen very carefully. R4 and R5. The content of R4 and R5 must be added. And it has to save in R6, right? So, there is some content in R4 and there is some content in R5 which has to be added and the result has to be saved in R6, right? So, you can see here the content of R4 is sent out to the internal bus, correct? Right, similarly, R5 is sent to the internal bus. What will happen here? What will happen here? That is R4, for example, R4 will reach A and R5 will reach B, right? And addition will take place, right? And it will send to this particular bus. And from there, we can send to the R6. That is what is going to happen here. From R4, R6, right? And select A. Select A is nothing but, what is select A? Select A is this, this one, right? We have to select A and then B, right? Because we have multiplexer here. So, it has to select A, right? So, you can see here, the content of A, R4 and R5 is added, right? And it is directly sent to this register. No temporary register and all. It will directly send to R6. That is through this particular bus. It will send to the bus. And then this bus, it will send to the R6. Very simple. Correct? So, that is the three bus instruction. Right? So, the same steps. Only thing is a small little change. That is PC instruction. It is simplified. Right? And then it can directly go to MAR through R is equal to B operation through ALU. Right. So, today what we have seen is we have seen three bus organization. Right. So, that is we have explained what is the difference between 
single bus organization and three bus organization. You are just draw that particular diagram and explain how the instruction is executed. Right? Hope you understand the logic. Thank you, students. Thank you, students. Thank you for watching. Kandipa in the video, Ongal Kalar, Kurombo useful Subscribe, passionate professor, and keep learning. Thank you very much.